we've talked about the importance of these House of Delegate races that are happening in Virginia, but they're important races happening right now. There are no off years. We're asking everybody right now, in these final few weeks before, before uh, elections in Virginia and the Ohio Reproductive Rights Ballot Measure, uh, for people to go to votesaveamerica.com and sign up and do what you can. Uh, in Ohio, there's a ballot measure uh, to uh, protect abortion rights. In Virginia, abortion is on the ballot, as we discussed. You can, do, you can help right now. There are races that need you right now. And because uh, it is an off year, you can have an outsized impact. We have to turn people out in an election year where they don't know often that, that it's another election because we, I don't know, we, we hide them on strange days. Uh, so go to votesaveamerica.com slash no off years, or just go to votesaveamerica.com, you'll crack it. You'll crack it at the main fucking hub. <laughs> <laughs> get involved. Also, the Love It or Leave It Eros Tour is heading to Portland and Seattle on November 3rd and 4th. There are a few tickets left. If you haven't gotten your tickets, I would suggest not waiting any longer. That's it. <laughs> You're out, almost out of time. Go to crooked.com slash events right now. And please welcome back to the stage Kimberly, Lily, and Alexandra. <laughs> welcome back. Can you come, come next to me? Lily, Alexandra. Hi. Now it's time for the rant wheel. This week on the wheel, we have airplane food, am I right? We have the Iliad. We have Southwest Virginia getting left behind. We have Netflix prices. We have uh, my rant, which shall be about Thomas Jefferson, the architect. Uh, yeah, buckle up. I've got notes. Uh, House Republicans, going to the vet is always an errand from hell. Keurig T, let's spin the wheel. It has landed on Southwest Virginia being left behind. Was that Lily's rant? No, it wasn't me. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. For me, you know, I ran in this race because we got left behind, but a little fun fact, last year I actually worked in Josh Thronberg's race here, right here in the 5th Congressional District, uh, against Representative Bob Good, uh, which we all... And that was the reason what made me think of this. So really more generally speaking, rural Virginia. You know, last year when we ran this race, we had to fight so hard to get people to come and fight in this district and fight all across Southwest and Southside Virginia. And so for me, I just wanna make sure that we're thinking about these races and how they have longer term impacts. I mean, the race that we ran against Bob Good last year has long term impacts. I mean, look at what we're seeing right now. We would, it would look a lot different in Congress if we had one against him, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's spin it again. It has landed on House Republicans, which I believe was suggested by Kimberly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so full disclosure to everyone in the audience, I have never fired a Speaker of the House. All right. <laughs> But if I did, but if I did, I'm pretty sure you should know what you're going to do next. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, just, it just baffles me that, that this, you know, chaos caucus was able to get together and get this done, and then they're looking at each other like, okay, now what? <laughs> and we're looking at them like, well, you're the one that fired him. You know, you didn't have anyone else in mind, but it's, to me, it's just, it just shows why it's so important that we vote in every election and make sure that we vote for people who are smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do think it, like, it is part of this, like, national trend. It is what's happening here in Virginia, too, which is there's a lot of Republicans that they know how to run a campaign. They know how to make noise and make chaos and make people afraid and, and make people worry. They know how to like, do a good television hit, but they don't have any interest in actually doing the daily work of governing. Absolutely. Campaigning is one thing, governing is another. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Let's spin it again. It has landed on the Iliad. I'll take it. Oh, no, Alexander. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's also a movie. Uh, <laughs> to, 
with Brad Pitt. No, so all, please stop me because all I want to do is talk about the Iliad. I'm so excited about the Iliad. It's, it's, it's my gourds, it's my bagels, it's like my Christmas. I don't even know how to express how excited I am for it. So new translation just came out from Emily Wilson. She did the Odyssey back in 2017. It was phenomenal. And like, like it's so much better. I, I, like, I know what the original Greek is like, you know, whatever, but like, that's... That's in Greek, it's hard to read. You have to get your dictionary out and flipping back and forth and remembering. But in English, it's like, I understand what she's saying. And so I highly recommend reading it in translation, just like a lot less clicking, a lot less flipping. But also the translation's so good, like if you like to be alive, if you like reading similes, if you like reading battle sequences, it's got it all. It is like, I, I, obviously I've been a Greek nerd since like the Dolayer's mythologies back in the day, uh, but they're a classic for a reason. Um, and so, yeah, this is, this is just everybody go read the Iliad and let's all talk about it. And <laughs> that's... I, first of all, I just, first, I just, I'm still a bit, I'm honestly like still kind of in awe because you're saying to this audience, hey, listen, I know what you're thinking. You don't have to read it in the original Greek. And they're like... <laughs> Oh, that's my was my whole plan to read it in the original Greek. Second, <laughs> there's been some controversy lately, or at least some like thinking, late, like public debate lately around the translations of these stories, and that there were these sort of uh, like hyper gendered versions, right? And now they are like, hasn't there been like a reevaluation of how these stories have been translated? Well, I think there's so many words that you can translate one way and like all the men who translated in the past would translate it that one way, but you could equally translate it another way that was just as valid and like illuminated whole aspects of the story. And that's been going on in uh, the Wilson versions. And I, I, but also it's just a beautiful version. Like nobody went up to, what's his name, Chapman. And they were like, oh, you're, you're Homer. Like, I love the gender of it. So like, I just also want her to get credit as like, just she translated it and it's dope. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Let's spin it again. <laughs> it has landed on my rant. The reason it says Lovett's rant is because we couldn't update the wheel over the weekend. <laughs> Here's what I would like to take you through. I, I have actually I put together a presentation uh, because I went on a, a stroll. <laughs> and I'd like to just tell you what my experience was today, which is... So this is uh, Jefferson's Rotunda, and we all think it's great, and we think the proportions of this are good. We think that this makes sense as a building, that the way it kind of pops up there, like a, like a mole, like the way it just kind of got a straight out, like kind of a protuberance. Okay, we like it, fine. All right, now I went, I went inside and I said, all right, let's check this place out. Next line. This room is too big. Nothing, uh, this is a giant conference table with leather chairs around it. If you, if you look at this room and you don't get a bad feeling, <laughs> there's something wrong with you. Nothing good has ever been decided in a room with this many chairs that look like this, in a room with this kind of ornate chandelier. I became a doctor there. You became a doctor in this room? What do you mean? Well, no, you became a doctor over several years. That's a room where they, that's a room. Next slide. That's a statue I saw. That's Thomas Jefferson. Hey, do, is the issue that people at the University of Virginia forget what Thomas Jefferson looks like? So if you're not reminded of it every seven seconds, something happens to you? Look at these dead fucking eyes. What the fuck? Look at that. Look at that. That's the best we're gonna do? This is finished? We're calling this a done work of art? You don't wanna put a fucking pupil in there? All right, next slide. The ceilings are too low. I, here's, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. I was like, Thomas Jefferson, architect, something you hear all the time. As I wandered through this rotunda, I thought to myself, but he had a lot of other things he said was his job too. And so was he an architect in the way that like 
Frank Gehry or Frank Lloyd Wright was an architect, or he's an architect in the way that that rich guy that designed that dorm with no windows is an architect. Because these ceilings are fucking low. Next slide. Low ceilings, next slide. That's this, th there's nothing going on up in this fucking roof. I'm looking at this rotunda. I mean, we're inside the rotunda now. There's not a painting. There's nothing, it's just a white wall. It's, this is not done. And I know it's burned down several times, which is also something you should reflect upon. Like, this is your most prized building. It burned down at least twice. It caught fire at least twice. You couldn't keep this thing from burning down. You know, somebody on the job of making sure that fire doesn't destroy this thing you all claim to love. It happened twice. Next slide. Faggity ass columns. Next slide. <laughs> hey, just because it has a column doesn't make it sophisticated. You're just putting them wherever you want. This doesn't make any sense. Doric, Doric, Ionic, Ionic, Doric, Ionic, Ionic, Doric. These two, closer together, these two, far apart. Next slide. What the fuck is going on here? First of all, fat ass Doric column, thinner Doric column, big space, Doric column, Doric column, Doric column. Right on top of each other, more columns, oddly spaced. Falling to pieces, by the way. Next slide. In fact, some of them are literally held together with what seems to be saran wrap. That is a column held together by literal fucking plastic wrap. Next slide. What kind of, this is a statue I found out later was, uh, speaking of the devil, a statue of Homer. Uh, what kind of groomer ass vibes are you people trying to put out there? Look at this fucking thing. And by the way, there's no sign near it. There's no way to know what this is. I, I walked, if you saw me outside today, earlier today, I was circling the statue looking for some explanation for who these two people are supposed to be. A naked boy with some kind of a liar harpsichord and, uh, and then an old man talking at him. <laughs> Next slide. But despite my protestations, stunning. It's a beautiful place. Look at that. Look at that. So I decided to walk on and I said, you know what? While I'm in this fair city, no one had yet told me the news about the bagels. <laughs> I actually believe I walked by and I thought, I did, actually it's funny, as I really did walk by, I believe this bagel place, because I thought, that's a lot of people at this bagel place <laughs> in the middle of the afternoon, huh? Of course, uh, because I hadn't had this information, the idea of my body physically crossing the, the threshold of a bagel <laughs> <laughs> South of Philadelphia seemed inconceivable to me. Like I don't like 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 in this like a vampire entering a house without an invitation or or someone my age walking into an urban outfitters. Like it like like I thought if I cr like a Jewish person walking into the University of Virginia Environs bagel store, I would fucking melt. So I walked on, but I did see it, but I was hungry, so I stopped in for a I, a burger. A, a Gus's burger. Not before 10 p.m. Now, that's an interesting point you're making. I see why this is a food that your eyes should not be able to focus on. <laughs> because, next slide. <laughs> uh, listen, I try to tell the truth. This thing was extremely okay. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is a famous burger. What is the name of this establishment? What? You're going with the white spot? That's the name we're sticking with? And by the way, it doesn't make it better when it's like since 1953. It's like, like, oh yeah, that's when you called it the white spot? And we're all just gonna fucking roll with that? What? Thank you for having me. <laughs> and that's the rant wheel. Guys, one more time for Alexandra, for Lily, for Kimberly. What, what's your website again? What's the website they can go to support you? Kim Adams for Virginia. Kim Adams for VA.com. And Lily? Lily for Delegate.com. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was really great. Really appreciate it.